Uh, and we do have some nice gen bashing going on here right now, but oh, the blood letter comes out. Uh, and this is a very interesting timing on a blood letter too. It's kind of a late blood letter in the sense that he obviously already got stuff beforehand. Um, but honestly, uh, he knows that there are no anti anti-vehicle squads out there right now. Obviously, a little bit of soft AV with the assault squad. Uh, and you can see them just tearing ass around the map right now uh, with that Veil of Time ability. Uh, but given the fact that he saw a heavy plasma team, uh, that's much easier for him to dodge or to kind of maneuver around. Uh, so he's obviously going to go ahead and just take advantage of Blood Letter. And you can see instant, instant reaction coming from Aki here. Uh, no coincidence whatsoever. Aki gets a Devastator Marine squad out on the field. I'm sure we will likely see uh, a last cannon get upgra upgraded on that as soon as he gets the wreck for it. Uh, but uh, pretty interesting use right there. So we got Blood Letter and Blood Crusher on the field right now for Kaltos. Uh, taking a look around, though, you'll see uh, capping the far right uh, victory point and capping the center right now. Kaltos is just about to finally get an edge in this game for the first time. He's at 155 points right now versus Aki's dominating lead of 498 points. Uh, Kaltos is just about to be up 2-1 to one if he can cap this center victory point. Yes, there he goes. Um, I really love the synergy of all of Aki's units right now. Uh, just the fact that the Librarian can combine, uh, it's, it's fine on Assault Squads, it's fine on um, all of his heavy weapon teams, and he even has his last cannon up there. So a lot of good things that he can use the Veil of Time ability on. He has a wide variety of units here, and they are all Space Marine units, and as a result, the Apothecary can heal them all. So uh, his army is really well uh, off. You can see now the Assault Marines landing in there just in time to disrupt a little bit of Nurgle worship. Uh, going to help out his troops quite a bit. You can see the first last cannon shot in the Melt Bomb going off on that Blood Crusher, but thankfully the Blood Crusher is being worshipped right now, so uh, that's faster than getting repaired. Uh, more towards the north, we can see a heavy bolt of turret was thrown down. And down in the south, we even have a little bit of ninja action going on with the Blood Letters. Uh, blood Letters chasing away, away that last cannon squad there with the Veil of Time on it. Uh, now doing some very serious damage here to this Devastator squad. Devastator squad down to a single gentleman. Oh, and he's going to be able to get out of there. And instead, they're going to turn their focus uh, back to this uh, last cannon Devastator squad. Uh, inflicting another casualty. Uh, now going to have to back away for the time being. Uh, but you can see the uh, Librarian uh, is kind of hanging out here. And... Uh, a uh, pretty solid looking victory right there actually uh, for Kaltos. Uh, he took a bit of losses there, but he was able to really drive back um, all of the anti-vehicle presence out there without actually taking too many losses. Normally you'd expect like a Blood Crusher to have a lot of trouble with a Librarian and a Last Cannon team out there, but the Blood Letters combo very well with that. I really like the way that he uh, used them to counter that. Uh, he was so sneaky with that that I had trouble ca catching up with the action as I was watching uh, the obvious parts of the battle there as well. So again, I like these Mark of Corn uh, Chaos Space Marines out there uh, just to kind of help out with dealing with the Assault Marines. The Assault Marines you can pretty much are going to... Uh, you can pretty much expect are going to lead off any encounter. Uh, and here we have it right now, the Tactical Marines uh, using that Veil of Time right now, trying their best, oh, but not quite getting away without getting suppressed. Uh, but they got enough of a flank off there. You can see the Plague Marine getting knocked back. He does have the Mucus Discharge ability to heal his troops, uh, but they were able to uh, just kind of flank in on that heavy Bolter turret with Flamethrowers, taking it out very easily right now. Uh, however, some Ninja Capping going on on the left by, uh, by these uh, Chaos Heretics here, and he's uh, obviously held the right-hand side this whole time. Uh, so it is still two to zero right now, but it looks like Aki is just about to grab the middle. So 432 for versus 131. Uh, Kiltos really far behind right now, but we can see a Chaos Dreadnought in production for him right now. So that's kind of cool. Over here on the left-hand side, we can see the Librarian leading things off with the uh, Assault Marines. Um, I do love the combination of all of these units, though. Like I said, Aki's army is very scary because it just synergizes well. All the units are very tough. He has a lot of healing, and he has some interesting buffs that can make them... Uh, you know, the one downside to his squad sometimes is mobility, and the Veil of Time really helps out with that. So look at this uh, overlapping fields of fire in the center right now. Uh, very useful for catching any off-guard uh, <laughs> vehicles or whatnot, but it doesn't matter. The Blood Letters are just going to leap on in here. Uh, they teleported as far as they could, but unfortunately they kind of telegraphed uh, their, their intentions here. Uh, doing a little bit of damage there, but that's fine. Uh, taking a look more towards the center, we can see now the Blood Crusher uh, moving back in, getting that... Uh, Giving a little bit of worship there. And here we have all the way up here on the right hand side again, gen bashing going on from these tactical marines. Uh, a little hard to say how effective the late game gen bashing usually is. Uh, again, I think we see some blood letters kind of warping around here. There they go. Uh, late game gen bashing, it's kind of hit or miss whether or not the person had enough uh, power, but you know, it's always damage. It's just the question is whether or not they're going to rebuild them with as much priority as you'd like. Uh, assault marines charging in. Now we can see the snare effect. And the melt bombs going off in that Blood Crusher, but check it out. He does have the Nurgle Worship up there right now, uh, doing its best job to repair. Uh, we can see heavy plasma shots coming in, and oh no, the last cannon is going to be able to take that gentleman down right now. Uh, totally wrecking him a little bit here. 
Uh, and we do have the Chaos Dreadnought moving around on the field right now as well here. So Chaos Dreadnought coming out. We do have uh, <laughs> we have Angels of Death being activated here to be able to help the retreat a little bit. Uh, heavy Plasma Cannon. Oh, doing so much damage there. And uh, it looks like he's going to be able to hold on to the center there. So Kaltos looking pretty good. Uh, that Dreadnought coming out of nowhere right now. Getting the Mark of Corn ability. Upgrading it so it has that uh, ferocious double melee clause there. And the ability to kind of go out of control with uh, anger and rage. Uh, I love the graphic when it does that. Uh, anyhow, uh, just kind of stomping around on the battlefield right now. Uh, unfortunate that he lost that uh, Blood Crusher. It was just too snared up, but if he could have moved it back a little bit further, that Worship certainly would have kept it in the game. And over here on the left hand, or on the right hand side, we can see that it looks like the blood letters were just kind of uh, blinking away once again to put some pressure on these scouts. But just notice how active these scouts have been. All game, we've seen them just kind of deking and dodging around on the right hand side of the map here. Looking pretty good. Uh, using a little bit of Nurgle worship once again here to try and uh, just kind of heal up his troops whenever possible, do some repairs and whatnot. Uh, towards the middle, we can see those tactical marines with the flamethrowers uh, still just chilling out in the center doing their thing. And uh, now you can see the armies are really starting to line up here. So we've got uh, Devastator team, we've got the Last Cannon team here with the Veil of Time once again moving up, taking some shots. Unfortunately, the Chaos Dreadnought right now is enraged, you can see. Uh, man, just look at the shots going off kind of all over the place right now, doing tons of damage. Uh, we can see that it looks like these Chaos Heretics, however, have got to get on out of there, taking a little bit too much. And look at the amount of damage going to this Chaos Dreadnought. Unfortunately, like I said, he can't really control him. Uh, so he's just going to kind of wander out into enemy fire right now. Uh, he needs something to save him here, but you can see that the uh, Chaos Space Marines here with the Mark of Corn are uh, going to be the best bet here to chase away the rest of those gentlemen. And yes, it looks like he's going to be able to survive with his Chaos Dreadnought intact. Uh, he did get a second Havoc Squad as well right now, which is uh, just kind of backing up over there. Um, so he does have double he heavy Bolter Squads. Not a bad idea when he knows his opponent's army uh, consists of so many... Um, so many Space Marine units, good uh, suppression and whatnot. Uh, and really, at this point in the game, he just needs to have permanent control over the middle. Uh, the right-hand side is easy enough to defend, but the center, he cannot lose it. Uh, he is at 95 points. His opponent's at 400 points. Uh, it is absolutely imperative that he uh, does not bleed out anymore. Up north, you can see, uh, just doing a little bit of resupplying. Again, always always good to stay on top of your macro. And uh, really not being uh, not being put off by that at all. You can see uh, that Aki is just going to be moving right back into the center right now. Uh, Devastator Plasma Cannon Team right where it should be. Last Cannon Team move up. I love, again, the overlapping fields of fire here. Uh, really helps them out a little bit. Uh, last Cannon starting to take some shots. And, man, that Chaos Dreadnought looking a little bit exposed there. Uh, he is getting repaired. That's good. Uh, but check out our Tactical Marines right now. Just going to grin and bear it and just sit there and just cap that victory point as fast as they possibly can. Uh, you can see decapping it very quickly there. Uh, getting the cap on. This is very dangerous right now for Keltos. He needs to have as many victory points as he possibly can. Uh, looks like the Corn uh, Chaos Space Marines here are going to lead up the charge right now. Charging on in. Doing as much damage as they can. Uh, we do have the Chaos Heretics are up as well. Uh, doing some nice looking worship there. Uh, that's going to be enough to cherish them back. But once again, we have a wonderful flank going off right now by the Bloodletters. Uh, the Bloodletters are hacking and slashing away, and it looks like, yes, they completely take out the Apothecary. But no, the Apothecary is going to go ahead and use Laramin's Blessing to get back up in the field. But could it be? Could it be? Yes, it looks like the Bloodletters were able to completely take out that Apothecary two times in a row, uh, making him waste all the red on the Laramin's Blessing. Oh, that was a fantastic grab right there by those Bloodletters. Uh, the Chaos Dreadnought here is nice and defended, uh, hanging in the back. And we can see Tier 3 was acquired a a little while a little while ago by Aki and now he's gonna go ahead and get his Land Raider up on up and running uh, so obviously late game plan there of Land Raider I uh, still haven't seen anything but tier 2 out of uh, out of Keltos here uh, unfortunately he's not gonna be able to well at least you know he wouldn't have been able to build up uh, to sorry to to uh, repurchase his apothecary anytime soon because of that Land Raider but uh, he's been saving up for a little while now so we should see that eventually uh, that was a level 3 Apothecary, by the way. Uh, it's, it's late enough game right now that I'll take a look around at the levels of some of these units here. Looks like level 2, level 3 on the Blood Letters, level 2 on most of his early units there for Kaltos. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like we've got level 3 Tactical Marines, uh, level 1 for most everything else, level 2 Librarian, though. So, uh, just to give you guys a quick little overview of what the levels of these units are like late game here, to give you an idea. Uh, but definitely some, some pretty noticeable level advantage, actually, for Keltos here, to some extent. Although, I don't know what his Chaos Havocs are, because I believe they're hanging out for the time being. Anyhow, taking a look around now. Oh, yes. We have the black and white Land Raider on the field right now by Aki. I do love just kind of appreciating the detail of this whenever I can. Uh, the art is great. Look at all the little mud on it. and just It's just painted really beautifully. Just going to go ahead and drive right over that apothecary. Don't even worry about it. Not even a speed bump. Just boom. Right over the apothecary. No worries whatsoever. 
Um, looking pretty good here. And obviously now he's going to look to set this Land Raider down right uh, downtown uh, Central Square here and just take over this victory point. Land Raider's moving on in, and honestly, this is going to be a tough fight for uh, Keltos if he's going to be able to resist uh, the force of this because it's healing his troops. He can resupply from it, and it's just a mother. And, and he's just going to go for it. Oh my god, he's just going to go for it. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. We have the Blood Crusher right now doing his best to flank the anti vehicle squads. Meanwhile, we just have this angry, angry Chaos Dreadnought. Uh, doing as much damage as he can, and the blood letters, the blood letters, and the blood crusher are just destroying, uh, destroying these anti-vehicle squads. And look at this guy! Check out the chaos dreadnought right now. He is just tearing away at this land raider, just ripping away. He is not being assaulted by anybody right now. Uh, we do have, uh, looks like touch of Nurgle was off right now in the chaos heretics. Perhaps uh, they were doing some damage, or maybe there's just some uh, worshiping going on as well. Uh, and now the blood letters and the chaos dreadnought right now are just slamming into this land raider. The land raider is taking so much damage. I can't even believe that Kaltos just just headlong rushed to this. It looked like he didn't even plan it. He just charged on in, uh, but just beautiful flanking, beautiful positioning right now. Blood Letters getting in, going to be able to deal the coup de grace right now. You can see these assault marines here are trying their very best to help out, but oh my god, a few more shots, and bam! Oh no, but it looks like the Chaos Dreadnought's going to go down, uh, but that's the least of his worries right now. He's still looking pretty good. Oh, one final shot from that uh, <laughs> from that pesky Devastator Marine Squad down there, but my god, look at that. The Apothecary got wrecked right there. Uh, the <laughs> This Blood Crusher is actually doing a phenomenal job uh, wrecking everybody here this librarian is forced to retreat right now land raider completely destroyed by mass melee and we actually have a gg coming out of aki right now uh, even though he's at 272 versus 76 points right now complete and total gg by aki so phenomenal phenomenal counter attack right there by kaltos I love that. It was just so well executed. Uh, all of his units were being perfectly microed. Everybody seemed to be attacking exactly who they needed to attack. Uh, Aki was in a pretty defensible position there, and Keltos just picked it apart. He took a lot of losses, but he just did it uh, very well there. Uh, a little bit of Laramin's Blessing at the end there. I believe the Apothecary jumped back up and got back into the fight. Uh, you can see here the epic struggle uh, going off right now between the Plague Champion and the Apothecary. How appropriate that it ended on this scene. Look at that. He's just punching. He doesn't care. He's just going to throw a fist right at him. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, really great game here. Keltos and Aki are two phenomenal players, and uh, I always love watching their games. So if you did enjoy this, by the way, as always, feel free to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my discussion board. All that stuff is on my channel. I'm Harlequin.